Hello, my precalculites, and every day is one day closer to summer break. We're doing part two of one four notes today, and whenever you learn something going one way, like composition of functions in mathematics, whenever you learn to do something one way in mathematics, they always have you do something going backwards. So that's what we're doing today, is decomposing functions that... Um, is an opposite of composition. So they're saying if I compose two functions, f and g, determine these two functions so that when I put one inside the other, it would give me this function y equals. What I ask myself is what function is being done and what is it being done to? There's a couple of ways you can look at this, but that's the way I like to look at it. So for example, this one, I'm having the quantity of x plus 3 squared. I'm having a quantity squared. So I let one be the x plus three, one function be the x plus three, and the other be the squared. But the question is, what needs to be first? I'm gonna say that x plus three is one function, and you're gonna wanna square it. So the other's gonna be the x squared function. I wanna take x plus three and replace the x in the second function so that it's x plus three quantity squared. So since I am putting the x plus three into the x squared function, the other function is going to be f of x because the g of x has to go inside the f function. So if I compose f o g, it's going to be x plus 3 quantity squared. So that's what you're trying to do. There are more, there is more than one answer for these, but this is the way I like to think of it. So on this one, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can say 2 over something. So I could have one function be 2 over x and the other function be x minus 3 quantity squared. That works. I could also say 2 over x squared and then make the other one x minus 3. So if I look at this one, I'm going to let 1 equal x minus 3 and the other one be 2 over x squared because I just have to put this simple one in for x on the other one f of x is going to be your 2 over x squared because this guy is going inside the other one. So he's the first guy. And then your g of x is going to be x minus 3. And that's it for this problem. Let's do another example. What I ask myself is what operation is taking place, taking place and what is it being done to? So for example, this is a square root of. What comes after the of is what's going to be in your g of x. The square root function is going to be your f of x. So in other words, one possible decomposition would be the square root of x and x squared plus 5. Because if I replace the x in this f of x, if I composed and did f o g, f composed with g, I would replace the x with x squared plus 5, and I would get this function h of x. Another thing you could do is you could have square root of x plus 5 and put in the x squared. To me, that's not as intuitive as this. The last thing on this video is a quick review. Now, this is on the bottom of your notes. I want you to pause the video here and try to do this quick review. I want you to find the domain and express it at interval notation. So try to do that and just pause right here. All right, now that you've done finding the domain for those, when I look at this one, I know I cannot have zero in the denominator, so x cannot equal negative four. The way to say that in interval notation is negative infinity to negative four, round parenthesis, union, round parenthesis, negative four to positive infinity. This is how you take a value out of the domain when you're writing in interval notation. The square root of x plus 1, what's under the square root has to be greater than or equal to 0. So that means the domain has to be from negative 1 to positive infinity, but it can be 0, so you include the negative 1 and place a square bracket around it. Number 3, this one cannot equal 0 this time. The x plus 1 uh, cannot equal 0 because it's in the denominator of a fraction. So you should have a round parenthesis around the negative 1. The log of x. You may not be familiar with this one, but if you look at the graph, the domain would go from zero to positive infinity. And if you weren't sure if zero would be part of the domain, try taking the log of zero. You have a button on your calculator that's log, and you could see if that works or not. If you get an error, you know that zero is not in the domain and needs a round parenthesis. F of x equal four, well, there's no x, is there? So this is all reals. This is just the horizontal line y equal four. That's it, and I'll see you later.